Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I will talk about ectodermal dysplasia and ectodermal dysplasia syndromes. Now pure ectodermal dysplasia comprise a large heterogeneous group of inherited disorders that have primary defect in the development of two or more tissues which are derived from the embryonic ectoderm. Tissues which are primarily involved in ectodermal dysplasia include skin and its appendages, which are hair follicles, eccrine glands, that is sweat gland, sebaceous glands, and nails. Another tissue which is affected is the teeth. There are more than 190 distinct types of ectodermal dysplasia, but two most common types are hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia and the second is hydrotic ectodermal dysplasia. Now ectodermal dysplasia syndromes. These are defined by combination of ectodermal defects plus other anomalies. Now these are the three most common ectodermal dysplasia syndrome. The first one is ectrodectyly ectodermal defects and cleft lip or palate syndrome. Second is Haywell syndrome or ankyloblephron ectodermal defect and cleft lip and palate syndrome. And third one is Rep Hodgkin syndrome. Now first I will discuss the two important ectodermal dysplasia. The first is hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia. It has further four subtypes. Type 1 is also known as christ seaman turin syndrome. It is X-linked recessive disorder and it is the most common ectodermal dysplasia. It is caused by EDA gene mutation which encodes ectodysplasin protein which has an important role in cell survival, growth and differentiation. Now second type has autosomal recessive inheritance and is caused by DL gene mutation which encodes ectodysplasin receptor protein. Third type of hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia is also caused by same DL gene mutation but it has autosomal dominant inheritance. And the fourth type is hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia with immune deficiency. It has X-linked recessive or autosomal dominant inheritance and is caused by NEMO gene mutation. Now the clinical features of hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia. These patients have characteristic facial dysmorphism. These include frontal bossing, malar hypoplasia, flattened nasal bridge, recessed columella, thick everted lips, wrinkled hyperpigmented periorbital skin, and prominent low set ears. Next is the partial or complete absence of sweat glands. Affected patients are unable to sweat and there are episodes of high fever in warm environments. Skin over the entire body in this patient is dry, finely wrinkled and hypopigmented. There is extensive peeling of the skin in the newborn period. Other dermatological features are atopic dermatitis, photosensitivity, palmoplantar keratoderma and facial telangiectasias. These patients have thin, brittle, slow growing, kinky or woolly, fragile, dry and lusterless hair. Scalp hair is sparse, fine and lightly pigmented. Eyebrows, eyelashes and other body hair are also sparse or absent. But sexual hair growth is normal. Teeth abnormalities in this patient include small primary teeth, anodontia or hypodontia of the secondary teeth, conical or peck shaped teeth, premature loss or delayed eruption of teeth and defective enamel. Now other features of hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia include eye abnormalities, decreased tearing, photophobia and recurrent conjunctivitis. There is frequent otitis and deficient hearing. There is also frequent rhinitis, sinusitis and nasal congestion. Xerostomia that is decreased saliva, dysphagia and recurrent pharyngitis is also common. These patients have hoarse voice and wheezing because of airway constriction and inflammation. There is also increased incidence of atopic disease, gastroesophageal reflux, failure to thrive and short stature, but sexual development is usually normal. 
Now, carrier females of X-linked type of hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia may have no or less severe clinical manifestations. Now, a few words about hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia with immune deficiency, that is the fourth type. It has similar findings in sweating, hair and nail development along with seborrheic dermatitis like rash and intertrico. Plus, there is decreased immunoglobulin level and because of this, there are recurrent infections. The second most common type of ectodermal dysplasia is hydrotic ectodermal dysplasia. It is also known as Gluston syndrome. Now it has autosomal dominant inheritance and it is caused by mutation in GJB6 gene which normally code for a gap junction protein Cunexin 30. In these patients scalp hair is very sparse, fine and brittle and alopecia is also common. There is absence of eyebrows and eyelashes. Nail dystrophy and persistent peronychial infections are common. There may be polydactyly, syndactyly and bulbous fingertips. However, patients have normal faces, there is no specific dental defects and sweating is normal. But there may be hyperkeratosis of palms and soles, conjunctivitis and blephritis is also common and reticulate hyperpigmentation of knees, elbows and fingers may be present. Now I will discuss the features of three most common ectodermal dysplasia syndromes. First is the ectrodectyly ectodermal defect and cleft lip and palate syndrome. It has autosomal dominant inheritance. Ectrodectyly means the deficiency or absence of one or more central digits of the hand or foot. Now, ectrodactyly with tetramelic 3 to 4 syndactyly result in characteristic lobster claw deformity of the hands and feet in this patient. There is also hypoplastic metacarpal or metatarsal bones. Other features are cleft lip or cleft palate, mild hypohydrosis, coarse dry hair with hypotrichosis, xerostomia, dystrophic nails, dental enamel hypoplasia or microdontia. Other associated effects may include blepharophimosis, lacrimal duct anomalies, strabismus, deafness, conal atresia, and genitourinary defects. Second common ectodermal dysplasia syndrome is Hay-Well syndrome or ankyloblepharon ectodermal defect and cleft lip or palate syndrome. It has also autosomal dominant inheritance. There is scaling and erythema at birth and patient has characteristic faces because of ankyloblepharon which is the congenital adhesion of upper and lower eyelid margins by fibrous bands. There is broad nasal bridge and sunken hypoplastic maxilla. Now cleft palate is more common than cleft lip. In this patient, a recalcitrant crusted inflammatory scalp dermatitis is common and this may lead to scarring alopecia. Chronic blepharitis and conjunctivitis is also common. Nails are absent or dystrophic and teeth are peck shaped. There is mild hypohydrosis and hair are sparse and coarse. Third type of ectodermal dysplasia syndrome is Rep Hodgkin syndrome. It is an autosomal dominant disorder. Patients have characteristic faces which include high forehead, narrow nose, cleft lip or cleft palate and maxillary hyperplasia. There is severe hypohydrosis and heat intolerance. Teeth are conical or there may be hypodontia. Hair are sparse and have steel wool texture. A recalcitrant inflammatory scalp dermatitis is common in this patient and this may lead to scarring alopecia. Nails are usually narrow and dystrophic. Occasional anomalies include deafness, eye defects and hypospadias. Now the laboratory studies. In general, laboratory studies are not useful in the diagnosis or management of ectodermal dysplasias. However, patients with ectodermal dysplasia associated with immune deficiency may have hypogamma globulinemia with impaired lymphocyte proliferation and cell-mediated immunity. Now, sweat pore counts using yellow starch iodine powder and palmer or scalp skin biopsy may document hypohydrosis and a reduction in the number of eccrine glands. Scalp biopsy is the most sensitive and is 100% specific. Ectodermal dysplasia is a lifelong condition and there is no specific medication to treat it. 
However, the patient is managed as follow. Patient should be protected from exposure to high ambient temperature. Air conditioning should be used in home and school if possible. Child should consume cool liquids and wear light and cool clothes. Early dental evaluation is important and the patient should be encouraged for routine dental hygiene. Now prosthesis should be provided for cosmetic reason and for adequate nutrition. Artificial tears are useful to prevent damage to cornea in patients with defective lacrimation. Patient with xerosis or eczematous dermatitis may benefit from topical emollients. Alopecia may necessitate wearing of a wig to improve the appearance. Protect nasal mucosa with saline sprays followed by application of petroleum jelly. Patient with hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia with immunodeficiencies should be monitored for infections and therapeutic or prophylactic antibiotics should be given. Now early repair of cleft lip or cleft palate may lessen facial deformities and improve speech. Now instruct patient with hypohydrosis to avoid vigorous physical activities and maintain adequate hydration while playing or exercising. Now recommend swimming or sedentary sports. Educate parents that antipyretics are not effective in the treatment of hyperpyrexia. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel.